Hello everyone, welcome to the wonderful series developed by Dr. Manojar Mohanty um, on the crop modeling and thank you Dr. Mohanty for inviting me to discuss more on how to link seasonal climate forecast to the crop model. So when we use decision support system for crop model for upcoming season, we need to integrate the upcoming seasonal climate information to the crop models. So before going into the detail, let me introduce myself first. My name is Prakash Kumar Jha. I am a postdoctoral scientist at the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for collaborative research on sustainable intensification, popularly known as SIL Lab, at Kansas State University, USA. Uh, my most of the work is in the crop modeling and geospatial analysis, mostly in the Western African countries like Ethiopia, Senegal, Burkina Faso, Tanzania, and couple of Asian countries like Thailand and Bangladesh. So today we'll mostly discuss on how those climate information plays role in the food system when we use those uh, climate information into the decision support system like crop simulation models. We need to integrate climate at a bigger picture and the climate at a crop scale or a time frame of the crop season as well. So the ability of the global food system to achieve food security is under significant pressure due to the significant climate change because of unprecedented human pressure. And then the global demand for food is also on the rise uh, because the population is rising, the diet pattern is changing. So as the, this pressure on the global food system increases, the food system is becoming increasingly vulnerable to these acute shocks. So when you see here, those global phenomena of El Nino, sea surface temperature and the wind pattern, they can influence agriculture or food system at the local scale to the larger scale. So these spatial temporal distribution of the climate are influenced by the larger climate phenomena, the atmospheric phenomena. Especially you will see the Indian subcontinent in the left side you can see here the influence in Indian subcontinent because of these larger climate phenomena is especially in flooding or torrential rainfall or drought and that influence crop production much. If you go to the stats of this report they say that the wheat production is reduced by 11% and rice by 18% because of the drought in India only. Similarly for Australia it is reduced by 50% for wheat. So my point is that the Atmospheric phenomena can influence the agriculture production system at different scale and we need to integrate those climate phenomena into the decision support system when we think on the past, present and future impact of those climate on the food production system. Especially when we talk on the agriculture system, uh, everyone has different different requirements. The soil scientist has different requirement. The social scientist has different requirement, and their needs are different. So they, based on their needs, they use those weather phenomena at different scale. Weather phenomena at seven to ten days scale, and then prediction of upcoming seven to ten days for weather, and the climate forecast for a couple of months, and the climate change for a longer a decadal scale. So if you are a crop modeler, if you are a economic modeler, you need to think on different scale. Let's say for crop, if you have to decide something, no one can predict what the next season will exactly, will exactly bring to this cropping season. When you are planting stays, you need information based on the climate information, how to plant and when to plant. So to manage those upcoming risks, various measures can be taken like uh, maintaining a storage reserve, diversifying crop productions, insurance and taxation by government, and then subsidies from the government. And especially when those information comes through decision support system, the policy makers or other stakeholders, they use those systems at different scales. From a farmer's perspective, however, adaptation to climate change is more closely related to the addressing risk associated with the interannual variability within the season. So when we talk about seasonal climate forecast, that is a couple of months, upcoming months, these forecasts have proven especially valuable in developing countries where agriculture is mostly rain fed or you can say the technology is very limited. So unlike weather forecast, you can see the weather forecast here, weather prediction here, those are at a small scale of 7 to 10 days, uh, which are reliable because the lead time is smaller and the accuracy is more. 
But for the climate forecast, they have uncertainties. Those climate forecasts under the lead time of three to four months or six months, so ranging from uh, one month to six months. So they have uh, inherent uncertainty within that. And that's how the agencies which uh, issues those forecasts, they have like NOAA, IRI, if they release those forecasts based on the time frame, they have uncertainties. And based on those uncertainties, they release forecasts on probability, probability basis. So that is called as a tercile probability. So you might uh, you might aware of the fact that uh, they release forecasts based on above normal, normal, near normal. So these are the tercile probabilities where they release the climate uh, phenomena or prediction of the rainfall and temperature based on the priorities. So if you see the simulation horizon of crop growing season, if planting is in May and you're harvesting around September, October, if you have information around uh, seasonal climate forecast of three months, May, June, July, then you can select when to plant and how to manage your uh, resources. Especially if you come to the mid of the crop season, June, July, August, fertilizer and irrigation uh, scenario, you can decide based on the information of June, July, August. Similarly, for July, August, September, you have information and then you can decide on the maturity level and when to harvest. So my point is that when you need to integrate the climate information, you need to select which window you are selecting for and where is your decision time. If you're planting or if you're taking fertilizer management decisions so based on your decision timing your uh, your crop model can be integrated to those climate forecasts so you need to calibrate your model then you can use those forecast period for future and future in the sense for the next three months and crop season and then you can change your strategy uh, management strategy and tactical decision within the crop season also however when we talk on the climate uh, forecast, seasonal climate forecast, these alone can fall short in providing actionable information for improving farm level decision. Why? Because these forecasts are linked with a decision support system when they have same scale. But I explained that these climate forecasts have a scale of tercile probabilities that is called above normal, below normal and normal. But the crop model needs daily weather data. So when you use any forecast of next three months, if you are planting in a July, let's say if you're a rice grower and you're planting in a July and you have information of uh, upcoming rainfall for the next three months, July, August, September, you need to have a daily weather of rainfall value, right? And to, to get those rainfall values or a daily scale, you need to downscale the forecast, which is on above normal, normal, near normal, based on the 30 year climatology and the regression curve. So you can downscale those climate forecasts and then integrate into crop model. So there is a gap, there is a disconnect between seasonal climate forecast information, which is available, and the crop system models. So if you use the daily weather sequence downscale from climate forecast, you can easily forecast your yield or water balance scenarios and other thing in the crop model. So my point is that there are certain tools which can downscale the seasonal climate forecast into daily basis. So basically two information rainfall that is precipitation and temperature are two parameters which are uh, which are regularly forecasted and provided to through different agencies. So let's say if we have enough information from uh, NOAA or IRI or UK Met Office or uh, IMD that there is a above normal rainfall of 50% and below normal rainfall of 20% near normal 30% similarly for temperature 20, 30, 50. So you can downscale based on permutation combination of P and T. Similarly, uh, altogether you can down the downscale P and T altogether and you can downscale separately also. So there are pros and cons of downscaling separately and altogether. So I'm not going into the detail how to uh, and why one is beneficial than the other. But we have developed tool which can downscale altogether precipitation and temperature at daily basis. And that's how at let's say July 1 planting time, you will have enough inference of daily rainfall value of July, August and September for upcoming season. And that's how you can use that Form in information, climate information into the crop model. However, there are umpteen number of uh, downscaling tools, but the problem is to disconnect. So the major obstacle is integrating those downscaling tool to the seasonal climate forecast because of mismatch of a scale. So we have developed a tool called climate agriculture modeling and decision tool, which can integrate 
those seasonal climate forecast down scaling tools into the crop model so in this tool we have selected a famous uh, well you uh, well recommended and highly used crop model called dsat dssat the season support system for agro technology transfer and we integrated our downscaling tool of seasonal climate forecast into the crop model so here you can see if you have enough information from the website of met office about seasonal climate forecast you just put the values of above normal below normal and then you can put the values of your planting details which cultivar planting density the soil condition and in the desired setup scenario fertilizer and irrigation so based on different scenario you can get scenario results if you are selecting replica of let's say uh, three fertilizer or let's say three planting window or let's say multiple number of irrigation replication so you can see the output of the result so let's say example i'll show you the planting window so here you can see the planting window of january 20 january 20 february 20 and the march 20 these are three planting window and based on three planting window you can see the yield forecast change so there are significant change based on the different planting window similarly you can do the fertilizer scenario and the irrigation scenario if you want to know more about this model just google climate agriculture modeling and decision tool you can you will get multiple number of papers and uh, uh, technical know how how to work on this model basically our purpose today is to discuss how actually crop model can be um, can be uh, integrated with the seasonal climate forecast so here we explain today how to downscale the probability scale climate forecast into daily basis using downscaling tool which can be used by any crop model so <clears throat> um, thank you dr mohanty for inviting me for this lecture and hopefully we'll discuss more on how to use the crop model uh, for betterment of the crop production system especially uh, indian agriculture as well thank you